As most golfers know, the rules of golf can at times feel fairly confusing. And that's what this video is gonna to try to tackle. So we're gonna look at seven rules that golfers still find confusing, even if they've played the game for quite a while. Uh, I'm gonna be joined by uh, Jez Elwood, Golf Monthly Rules Guru, and he's gonna talk through each of these scenarios and explain A, why they're a little bit confusing, and B, exactly how you should proceed in each of these situations. We're here at the London Club, let's get started. One. Very funny. Uh, but this part of the video is about uh, when you are and when you are not penalised for accidentally moving your ball, which I've just yeah. done there. Thankfully, on the tee, no penalty. No penalty because at this point on the hole, the ball is not in play. You haven't made a stroke at it unless that was an abnormally short backswing. It was not. Um, so the ball is not in play. So if you move it off the tee, fine. But there are plenty of scenarios on the golf course where you do get penalised for doing something like this. Jez, let's yeah. talk about them. Uh, for the first one, you're searching for your ball, you yep. hit it in some deep rough and you're looking for it, you're swishing around, you accidentally move the ball, what happens then? Well, this is one of the new exceptions that came in in 2019. Before, if you'd trodden on your ball when you were searching for it, you would have been penalised. Now you're not. You must replace the ball where it was or where you estimate it to have been before you kicked it or nudged it with a club to the best of your ability and then play on penalty free. So no penalty, but you must replace the ball. Must replace the ball. What happens about, let's say you're in the rough or you're on the fairway and you put the club down behind the ball as I've just done there and you nudge it off, or you drop something on the ball, yeah. like a head cover or a towel, or I don't yeah. know, you could be carrying anything, a coin. Yeah, well, this is where some of the confusion has really come in. And I, we've had quite a lot of letters, Golf Monthly, for, from people who think there is no longer any penalty for any accidental movement but that's not the case. The default position is still a uh, penalty if you accidentally, or deliberately, but if you accidentally move your ball with the club by dropping something on it, there is still a penalty. You've got to be careful around your ball once it's in play in the general area of the golf course. Yes, um, but the same isn't true on the putting green. It isn't. Again, in that previous scenario, you do have to replace the ball before yes. you play on. very important. Uh, putting green, that was another exception that uh, came in that any accidental movement, so whether you nudge it with the putter on a practice stroke or drop a coin on it or catch it with your foot, any accidental movement of the ball on the putting green is no longer a penalty. You must replace the ball before you play your next stroke. All really useful to know because these scenarios, they do happen. I can guarantee you at some point in your golfing life, you are going to accidentally move the ball while you're looking for it in deep rough. Knowing that it's not a penalty, but that you do have to replace it is key. And it's worth just underlining that in all of these scenarios, you always have to put the ball back. There's never a scenario where you move it accidentally and then play it from wherever it's come to rest. That is true. And if we were going to stress one thing, it is that if you move your ball, whether it's accidentally or not on the fairway in the rough, there is still a penalty despite a lot of people believing that there isn't. There you go. Okay, so this is one of the very few scenarios in the game of golf where players will need to make a judgment call. And it's not easy, this particular scenario. And it all boils down to a phrase that is uh, known or virtually certain. Jez, explain to us yeah. what's going on in this scenario. Well, you'll find that phrase in the definitions section of the book. and you know. Circumstance like this, you've hit your tee shot, it's come round some trees that you can't see. It's heading towards the penalty area. Yes. Um, you think it's gone in there, but when you get down here, there's this area of very thick grass. Big area of thick rough. Right on line with where your ball was heading. Didn't see it go in. Didn't, Didn't see it No splash. one saw a splash, either in your group or in a group ahead, calling back and saying it definitely went in. So you haven't got certainty. And then the rules say uh, virtually certain means 95%. So, yes. So uh, that's a bit of an intangible. How you work that out, I don't know. But for me, in this scenario here, because this grass is so long and thick and right in the spot where your ball was heading for, I would find it quite hard to say that was 95% certain it went into the water. Yeah, and the truth is different people are likely to interpret this yeah. rule in slightly different ways. I think you've got to be honest. You've got to be honest with yourself as well. In this scenario, am I sure my, my ball's gone in there? I think I'm probably maybe at best 60%. It could easily be in here. I'm yeah. obviously going to have a very good look for it. And if, I, if you find yourself having a good look for it in the thick rough, it means you're probably not certain it's not, gone in there, are you? So, indeed. And of course, the difference then is can you drop just here where the ball allegedly last crossed the edge of the penalty area? Or because you can't find it, do you have to go back and play again under stroke and, stroke distance. and distance? So it's a big difference. And I'm sure 
a lot of people would err on the side of it must have gone in, mate. But that's not quite what. Well, the if rules we were say. playing a friendly game of golf, I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> mind whatsoever in yeah. that scenario. I'm sure you would say to me, yeah, just drop it somewhere near. But if we were playing for handicap or you're playing in a competition. You really need to think very carefully yeah. about this. So uh, a rule that is well worth knowing when you find yourself in this very tricky, but not totally uncommon scenario. Okay, so without question, this is one of the most misunderstood rules of golf. And, I, and Jez, I'm not referring here to the, um, to the cart path. This is an immovable obstruction and yeah. nobody is expecting you to play the ball from the cart path, no. the bit that I think is misunderstood and confused is often where you get your relief from. Yeah. Now, we've chosen this specific spot very, very specifically, and it does happen. So, Jez, talk us through yeah. what often happens in this scenario and how people should, under the rules, yeah. proceed. Well, I think it's misinterpretation. People think it's on the path, uh, and that's, that's that. So you can take relief wherever you get away from the path, not nearer the hole but it's where the ball is lying on the path that's important. The key point. Uh, and you get your nearest point of complete relief from where it's lying. And in this case, much as you would want to come this way... I and would get definitely want to go over fluffy, there. We're playing in this direction here, so going around the corner there, I definitely want to hit mine from over there. in the Fluffy semi-rough or thick foot-high grass over here. Um, and some people might even say, well, I can't drop there because I'm not really getting relief. I'll go, there. I'll go back over there. But you have to remember what you're getting relief from. You're getting relief from this abnormal course condition, cart path, immovable obstruction. Rules of golf don't give you relief from thick grass. So if the thick grass is your nearest point of complete relief, that is where you have to drop. And there's only one nearest point of complete there relief. Is. There's not a, a few different options. It's one spot. And in this scenario, as you said, Jez, it's kind of in here, isn't it? Yeah. Where you've got all you've got of this bad lie. The ball bit about here so that your club has no chance of hitting the path on the way through. On you the get... way through. Of course, you don't have to take relief. You can play it from as it lies. That'll be down to the individual as to whether they want to kind of potentially endanger the bottom of their golf club by hitting yeah. a shot like this. I think I'd probably have to, t I would probably take this relief here. Yeah. And then try and just somehow, well, see how bad, let's have a look. See how bad yeah. it is and then get it back into play. So that it's... I would say was complete relief. Your club yeah, is not going to. Yeah, it was sitting much better. <laughs> But I think I can hit this. Well, I can. Yep. So you're back in play and you've proceeded uh, in accordance with the rules rather than going to where you would like to play from. And then potentially breaking them. Hopefully that helps you when you're in a situation like this. Mm. <laughs> Weak. Oh dear. That's not Weak. very good. Uh, I'd quite like to have another go at that, Jez. Now, yep. in order for me to do that, I need to know whether I'm allowed to practice on the golf course or not during yeah. a competition round of golf. Do I have permission to have another go at this? Well, you do if there's no one waiting to play in, hands on hips, waiting for you to get out of the way. Which there isn't anyone on the hole, so I'm fine. So I can hit this again. There is a limited amount of practice you can do in a round, um, and it's confined to the putting green you've just played or the teeing area you're next about to play from, so you can practice your putting and chipping on or near either of those two areas. You can't practice any bunker shots, so if you've fluffed a bunker <laughs> shot, you can't have another go at I that. can't think of the time I've ever hit a practice bunker shot on the golf course, but I'm sure someone has, but you're not allowed yeah, to. not allowed and, to. And, and if you are holding up the groups behind, they are going to be very angry about that anyway, so you're likely yeah. to hear about it after the round of golf yeah. anyway. Um, so this one, is fine. I can have it's fine. Go. Yeah, you'll find all the detail in Rule 5.5. .5. What if I breach the rule? If you breach the rule by playing a practice shot you're not allowed to in a place you're not allowed to, or you are unduly delaying play, you'll get the general penalty. So, so uh, if it's between holes, as it would be in this scenario, that would apply to the next hole you're about to oh, play. Good. So good in match like play, yep. you would get to the next tee and you'd have already lost that hole before you play it. So <laughs> you might as well walk on to the next hole. <laughs> Great. OK, well, I get to have another go at this. Yeah. I'm not going to hit such a bad putt this time, I promise. Yeah, a little bit more authority. Only just went in, though. Well, I mean, there's no... There's in is in. Is, yes, I know, exactly. I know, I know. Always second time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a scenario within the rules of golf that many players find confusing, even if they've played the game for many years. And in order to, for us to illustrate the point, we've made two pitch marks. One, 
that is off the green, just on the fringe, fringe here, and one that is on the green. But both of these are directly on the line of my shot. I would definitely want to putt this, Jez. Yeah. Now, one of these I can repair, one of them I can't. Explain to me what's going on. Well, there's a difference between the green and, not the green, the putting green, as it's called in the rules. You can repair a pitch mark on the putting green at any time, okay. uh, whether your ball is lying on the green or off the green. So okay. that's no problem. The one off the green, you're not allowed to touch. To repair that would be breaking rule 8.1a, which talks about conditions affecting the stroke. Yeah. You're not allowed to improve the turf conditions, uh, the ground conditions. That would be deemed to be doing that. Uh, right. And the penalty is pretty severe. It's what two it? shots in stroke play or loss of hole in match play. So Ooh, it's ouch. the general penalty. Definitely want to avoid that. So I'm going to repair yeah. this. What about if, how about if my ball came to rest yeah. there and then that pitch mark was made by my playing partner? Well, it's a, it's a one in a million shot probably, <laughs> but in that scenario, you would be allowed to repair it because you're entitled to the conditions that prevailed when your ball came to rest. Uh, that pitch mark wasn't there at that point. So in that rare, rare, rare scenario, you would be able to then repair that pitch mark yeah. that was created after your ball had come to rest. That is unlikely. It is much more likely that you're going to have a situation like this with a pitch mark. Yeah, it does like, happen. It does and I'm happen. going to have to chip this, and this is not my favourite shot. No. Oh, oh I didn't read it properly. It's gone oh, and that's three feet oh, left. No. Okay, so I have had a total nightmare here. I have hit a tee shot from uh, way over behind me and I've sprayed it miles right. And I'm on the, the green here. And this is not the green of the no. hole that I'm playing. I now need to hit a seven iron in this direction here. Yeah. What do I need to avoid doing, Jez? Well, you need to avoid hitting a seven iron off this finely <laughs> prepared surface. I this... really don't want to make a divot. The, no. the putting greens here are perfect no. as well. Uh, this is a wrong green as far as the rules of golf are concerned. And play from it is, prohibited, so you cannot play from it. Uh, you cannot play if your feet are on the green and right. your ball isn't. You've got to have complete, um, you've got to be completely away from the wrong green. Yes, not in, in interfering with stance or golf swing. So That's my it. nearest point of complete relief, somewhere well, here, I'm not going to take a divot and it goes club the from that. Down there, somewhere like that. And then, yeah, down here somewhere. So I'd be dropping just here and then, and then I can continue to play from about That's here. That's it. Yep, and uh, that is, what you would expect most people to do, but somebody on the PGA Tour a few years ago did actually play from a wrong green yes. with a full iron shot. Because, probably because they're very good at just nipping the ball off the top, but that Possibly. wall presumably is in play to stop you from damaging, the, damaging, damaging the, the green, course. essentially. I think it's important to remember as well, even on a Lynx course where you might be out and back and there are two greens very close together and it would be quite feasible to putt from one to the other, you still can't do it. You have to take relief that's good. from that's the wrong green. That's a good green. piece of advice, Jess, because yeah. I think I wouldn't even consider I think that. a lot of people would just think, okay, there's only a little bit of fringe, I'll just putt back to my green, but you can't do that. Yeah. Uh, and if you do do it, even in that scenario, it's the general penalty. Which is two shots in it the is, play, isn't it? And you'll find this all in rule 13.1F. There you go. So uh, playing from the wrong green, uh, there's a rule to protect you from doing it because it will damage the golf course. Make sure you run through the process that I've just been through and you should be fine. Oh no. Ah! Okay, so for this one, we have over elaborated a little bit. Yeah. And you might need to use your imagination a little bit because obviously I'd never hit a putt that bad. No. Well, <laughs> oh, well actually, I have done. But um, it's worth remembering your options. When you hit a really awful shot like that one, the one yeah. that I've just hit, Jez, that one's gone over the crest of this hill, it's gone down into a bunker, it's gone right into the back of the bunker, yeah. which is an almost an unplayable position. I'm now really scratching my head thinking, what do I do now? Explain to me what my options might well, be. You've putted, it could have gone into the water, it could have gone into a terrible lie. As you say, it's now at the back lip, you've got no shot. You're thinking you might have to take an unplayable. But what you're probably not thinking is, why don't I just putt it again under stroke and distance? Yes. Yes, there's a, a shot to add. So if, if, if you two putt from there, you know, it's effectively three more shots. But sometimes that just might be your best option. Best option in a scenario like this. It's also yeah. worth remembering that if you've chipped. So in that scenario, if I was just off the green, I'd, I'd thinned my chip, yeah. not wholly unlikely. Again, that option is open to me. Just remember that, because I think when people get onto the green, they sort of forget that that is a possibility, don't they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it might be a case where you're very close to a, a ridge. 
you're only four feet from the hole and you've just hit it a fraction too hard and suddenly it's off the front of the green. Well, having seen the first putt, you might think, okay, my best chance here is to have another go at that four footer. Yes. And you might be thinking, okay, well, that means taking stroke and distance from it nearer the hole, but you're allowed to do that on the putting green. You can take stroke and distance uh, just as you can anywhere else on the golf course. And if that means you're nearer the hole and where your ball will come to rest, you are allowed to do you're that. You're allowed to do that. So it's worth remembering, hopefully a situation like that doesn't arise for you, but if it does, try to keep that idea in mind. So there you have it, that's our look at the seven rules golfers still find confusing, even if they've played the game for a long time. There are reasons why some of these rules are a little bit confusing, but hopefully Jez's explanations have helped to clear things up for you. If you do have any questions, please do leave some comments below. We'd love to hear what you have to say. But that's it for now from the London Club. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.